Hello and welcome to this session in which we'd look, we're looking at the cost of capital but in, in this session we're going to look at the cost of debt and the cost of preferred stock. They're pretty straightforward the cost of debt and the cost of preferred stock. The cost of debt is very intuitive but we would look at it just to make sure we understand how it works. So what are we doing here? We're, we're trying to find out how much it's costing the money to raise capital. To raise capital to bring money so how can you bring money in the prior session we looked at common stock costs so we look at how much does it co cost the company to raise to raise common stock in this session we're going to look at that and we're going to look at another type of stocks preferred stock and remember under the common stock we look under the two method we look under the sml and we look under the dividend growth model we look at those two model we're going to combine those two because that and preferred stock are easy to calculate. So we're going to do them in this session. If you really think about it, what's the cost of that? Pretty straightforward. The cost of that is pretty straightforward. What do I mean by this? If you have debt, if a company has $10 million worth of debt, all what we have to do is find out what is costing you. What is the cost? So the cost of interest. So what is costing you? To maintain this debt let's assume it cost you it cost you um four hundred thousand dollar it cost you four hundred thousand dollars simply put it's costing you four hundred thousand dollar to carry 10 million worth of debt your rate is four percent so this is basically how we can find out the cost of that it's much easier than stocks okay so the cost of debt is the return the firm's creditor demands on new borrowing. In principle, we could determine the beta of the firm's debt, then use the SML to estimate the required rate on that just as we estimated. But this is not necessary because debt is a straightforward. Unlike the cost of equity, the debt can be normally observed either directly or indirectly. Okay, so what's the cost of debt? So we don't need to use beta. It's the interest rate the firm must pay on new borrowing, and we could observe the interest rate in the financial market. How much are you going to pay? And this is your cost. For example, if a firm already has bonds outstanding, then yield to maturity on these bonds is the market required rate of return on the firm's debt. So basically, what is your yield to maturity on these bonds? And that's going to be your, your cost of debt. Alternatively, if we know that the firm's bond are rated, say, the double a then we can simply find the interest rate on newly issued double a rated bond but again it may not be 100 percent accurate but we could be within a good guess so to know how much it will cost the company to issue the bonds either way there is no need to estimate beta for the debt because we can directly observe the rate we want to know so that's easy just one thing to be careful about when it comes to that the coupon rate on the firm's outstanding debt is irrelevant What's going to matter is what you actually going to pay relative to your outstanding debt. The rate just tells us roughly what's the firm cost of debt was back when the bond was issued, not what the cost of the debt is today. This is why we have to look at the yield on the bond in today's marketplace. Okay, so let's look at an example to see how this works. Suppose that General Tool Company issued a 30-year 7% bond eight years ago. So 7% means they're paying 7%. But here's what's going to happen. The bond is currently selling not for 1000 it's selling for 96 of its face value. So what is the cost of that for general tools? Going back to chapter 7, we need to calculate the yield to maturity on this bond because the bond is selling at a discount. The yield to maturity, which is the market, is more than 7%. But not that much greater because the discount is fairly small because 960 compared to a thousand the discount is fairly small so if you can check to see that the yield to maturity is about 7.37 basically what we can do just to kind of get a good estimate you could say um let's do it on an excel sheet so if you have one bond if you have one bond it's so uh, you're paying 70 dollars because it's paying seven percent that's the interest and if you have one bond the bond right now is selling for 960 so if you're paying you're paying seventy dollars basically on a nine sixty bond. So if we round, it should be approximately rounding. It should be approximately seven point three percent. So approximately again, this is an approximate figure, but you could find the yield to maturity, um, and it's approximately seven point three seven point three seven percent. So simply put, what you need to do, you need to discount 
the face value using 7.37 discount the coupon payment which is $70 using 7.37 and you'll get to the price of 9.6 so just I gave you an estimate this is an estimate so the other the other type of financing is the cost of preferred stock the cost of preferred stock is also straightforward and we looked at this in the prior session because the preferred stock usually have a fixed dividend that's paid every period okay so so a share of preferred stock is essentially a perpetuity the cost of the preferred stock the cost is the dividend divided by the price where d is the fixed dividend and p0 is the current price notice the cost of the preferred stock is equal to the dividend yield on the preferred stock of course okay alternatively because the preferred stock are rated in much the same way as bond the cost of preferred stock can be estimated by observing the required rate of return similar in a similar way rated shares of preferred stock so we could compare them but let's take a look at an example to see how easy to find the uh, cost of a preferred stock on april 24th alabama power company had issues had two issues of ordinary preferred with one one hundred dollar par value that traded on the nysc one issue paid 496 annually and sold for 92 dollars and 25 cent the other issued paid 492 this is what they're coming they have to come up with and it was sold for 95. so again just like how much are you paying relative to what you got for the first issue if you look at it let me just so what you do is you say, I am going to be paying on the first one $4.96 and $4.64. And I was, I was able to raise $92.25. So my cost is 5.03. For the second one, you have to pay $4.92 and you sold it for $95. So if you do this, you'll find out it's 5.18. What you do, what's the cost of preferred stock? You average them. You average 5.3 plus 5.18 so you could basically um, find an average for both and you could say the cost of preferred stock for this company is about 5.1 percent so once again the cost of the debt and the cost of preferred preferred stock are easy because they can be easily observable and what do i mean by easily observable okay what is your cost divided by how much money you were able to raise simple this is easy and this would be really intuitive if you have to pay one hundred dollars because you borrowed one thousand dollar from someone your cost of money is ten percent because you had to pay one hundred divided by a thousand so basically in the numerator you put your cost the cost of money in the in the denominator how much money you were able to raise and for that and the preferred stock it's as easy as that now there's sometime additional cost you might have to add to the numerator, but that's the basic idea. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me.